our next witness, Dr. Maria Pasto, representing the Women's Bar Association of the State of New York. Good afternoon, Your Honor, members of the committee, the commission. My name is Andrea Composto, and I am the president of the Women's Bar Association of the State of New York. Wabosni uh, is a statewide organization, a uh, statewide bar association comprised of over 4,300 members from 18 chapters throughout the state of New York. Today's testimony reflects the comments from Wabosni's members. We have reflected upon whether New York's departmental-based system leads to regional disparities in the implementation of discipline, if conversion to a statewide system is desirable, and how to achieve dispositions more quickly. Based on the feedback received from our members, Wabosni uh, has certain concerns about the implementation of a statewide attorney disciplinary system. We have centered our comments uh, to the areas of uniformity, efficiency, and transparency. Uniformity. Is the current appellate division-based disciplinary process inherently unfair due to the disparate sanction results to, uh, between the departments? Well, first, obviously, are there uh, disparities and do they exist? Yes, we have heard testimony about that today. But are the disparities gross disparities that warrant a complete separate disciplinary system than the current departmental-based system that we have now? The members of Wabosni do not believe this to be so. There are benefits to our current system that justify maintaining our system while additions can be made to enhance our current system. To justify a completely separate system, long-spanning research into the disparities would be necessary. One suggestion uh, that might be considered is that the Commission recommends a comprehensive overview of 10 years of disciplinary cases by, the four, by four law reviews, one in each department. Then the Commission would have a much more complete review upon which to base a meaningful decision of whether a completely new system is warranted. What are these benefits to our current departmental-based system? Judges decide cases on the facts presented in each case, and unique facts lead to disparate results. That's the nature of our adjudicatory process. Disparities that exist are likely justified by regional differences in the practice of law. The practice of law here in Manhattan is different from the practice of law in Malone. Paralleling this, then, the current appellate division-based system in which the committees of local practitioners assess attorney conduct in the first instance is cognizant of the regional differences in the manner of practice. Of course, gross misconduct, intentional conversion of a client's fund, you've been hearing about that all morning today, should not be easily forgiven in one department and harshly prosecuted in another but the current system appropriately takes into account the realities of local practice in assessing attorney conduct, thus finding a rational basis for the disparities. But what enhancements can we make to our current system? A suggestion that Wabosni members have provided is the implementation of uniform rules and procedures to help combat these differences uh, that exist between the procedural and substantive rules of the various departments. Currently, some departments have types of private discipline uh, that do exist in other departments. The first department has hearing panels that review the findings of a referee before the manner is presented to the court. No other department does this. O oral argument is per permitted in the third and fourth departments, but not permitted downstate. If these differences in procedure were eliminated, and uniform rules of procedure were implemented, fair and just outcomes would be achieved. The Commission could strongly recommend that the four departments harmonize their rules so that disciplinary rules um, and procedures are uniform statewide. This will enable the Commission to maintain the current departmental-based system that we have, yet create precedent throughout the state. 
it is the opinion of Wabosni that we need to see some blending of the current system with the creation of precedent for uniform rules and procedures throughout the four departments. Only then we will see our current system flourish and the disparities diminished. Moving on to efficiency, efforts can always be made uh, in assessing ways in which attorney disciplinary matters could be resolved more expeditiously. And Wabazi has no objections to working towards a means to help uh, resolve disciplinary uh, proceedings in a more efficient manner. We have received feedback from some of the chapters of Wabazni who proposed the consideration for setting up a system of ne uh, negotiated dispositions or plea bargains. Unlike other states, the rules in New York provide no means by which an attorney under investigation can admit to certain misconduct in exchange for an agreed upon disposition. Obviously, enabling, or enabling such an outcome would resolve some cases more expeditiously than the current full hearing in every case basis. It has been suggested that a speedy trial provision be enacted for attorney disciplinary cases. Wabosni has serious reservations regarding this idea. Attorney discipline is about protecting the public. Um, the public and the aggrieved clients are not necessarily well served by a speedy trial provision that would potentially short circuit an, an adjudication on the merits. The staff of the various grievance committees are tremendously overworked. Over 100, 150 open files per staff attorney, and a speedy trial provision could result in more dismissals, but not more expeditious dispositions. So accordingly, any enactment of a speedy trial rule would have to be accompanied by increased funding or staffing for the grievance committee from the Office of uh, Court Administration. Transparency. In studying ways to make the attorney disciplinary system more transparent, one can presume that a more open and public disciplinary system will be more trusted by the general public. However, this may not be the case. Once a petition of charges is filed with the court, the whole file becomes public. The file would be accessible by the press and the public, and arguments before the court would likewise be open. The thinking here is that the gr grievance committee acts as a grand jury, and approving a petition of charges has essentially concluded that probable cause for a finding of misconduct has been found. The vast majority of grievances filed against attorneys are disposed of either as frivolous or unfounded, or are resolved before ever reaching the appellate division, making these often unmeritorious or unsubstantiated charges public at such an early stage without the appropriate investigation or factual findings would do serious and irreparable damage to an attorney's reputation, particularly considering how easy it would be to make them available on the internet. Attorneys have no recourse when mere charges are made public. The appellate division is currently free to remit cases back to the grievance committee for the imposition of private sanctions, or private discipline, excuse me. Still, other cases are dismissed by the appellate division outright. In these instances, the public will already have been made aware of the charges against the attorney. And although this attorney may be ultimately vindicated or lightly disciplined, this will be of little solace when the attorney finds herself clientless due to the salacious charges repeated in the local newspapers. Making charges public upon filing would hold attorneys to a different standard than other professionals. Currently, disciplinary proceedings against doctors, accountants, architects, and even judges are completely confidential until resolved in an order of public discipline what is the rationale for treating lawyers differently from other professionals? Perfect timing as I'm concluding. Um, so with the area of transparency, it is with a resounding voice that um, 
our members of Wabosni feel that charges or filings of grievances should not be made public. On behalf of Wabosni, I thank you for this opportunity to speak before the commission. Um, and as always, we welcome the opportunity to further discuss this uh, subject matter with You just yes. did over here. Thank you. Uh, one thing you just touched on yes. uh, was that there are many or most complaints are dismissed as frivolous, and uh, you know that is a very uh, uh, can be a very troubling uh, circumstance if it's substantiated. And maybe we should get to get statistics on it. Maybe you can help us with it in weighing the uh, whether the uh, closed nature of the proceedings should be changed. Because if you said for example, for example, if most complaints statistically are dismissed uh, and you just going to have openness at the very filing stage, maybe there is sure charges are filed later on, that's another thing. Uh, that's something I think has to be weighed in the balance here in terms of whether or not the system should be changed. And if you could help us with any statistics on that, I certainly for one would be interested to see that. Well, currently, I don't have the statistics in front of me to present to you, but it is very troubling, and I think what the members of Wabazni, what their concern was, especially being that we come from 18 different chapters throughout the state of New York, um, but, um, you know, in the, in the beginning, we were thought that maybe the smaller chapters would feel this way, but it was uh, resounding that all of our, our members felt this way, or the different chapters, um, that there is such a great concern about the reputation of the attorney that would be sullied for these um, these grievances that were found to be unmeritorious or frivolous. And what does that local practitioner do when, if at such an early stage, that information has been made public? And and so that is something that that Wabosni feels we shouldn't. The commission shouldn't take a direction to move in this direction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Honor.